You cannot run a successful Airbnb without this. And I'm gonna give you five tips today that will set you up for success. So stick with me to the end. I'm also gonna give you a little template at the end that will help you. You cannot run a successful Airbnb without great reviews. It's a make or break. I've just seen someone give it away because they were just so sick of getting bad reviews. So maybe he wasn't doing all these things. Firstly, when you start your Airbnb, you are entering the hospitality business. Now I've been in the hospitality business. I've been in the restaurant business, hotels, resorts, accommodation, food service. So I do really understand how to give good service, but I love getting it back, don't we all? Don't go into the Airbnb business just for the money, because when you're in the hospitality business, you're dealing with the public, you're giving good service. You must like people in order to give good hospitality. So make sure you're going into it for the right reasons. Yes, the money's good. That's why we want to do it, because we want to make money. But remember that you are dealing with guests, with people's lives, with their hard-earned money. From the very first time that someone contacts you on the app, that they want to book your place, your property, straight away make sure that they feel seen and heard. So get back to them as soon as you can because they're waiting to make decisions at the other end. You know, will they book flights? Is your place the right place? Quite often they've got questions before they book. So be responsive, communicate clearly, be super polite, Use their name when you're responding to them. That first impression is going to linger. Also, if you have a problem with them during their visit, they're gonna go back to those first interactions. So will Airbnb. So make sure that everything you say on that app is everything you would want there for the long term because it's not going anywhere. I've had a few things go wrong in my Airbnb and you will have problems as well. I've had my air conditioners leak. I've had a tap that wouldn't stop running. I've had noise issues. I had a shower door come off its hinge. It's never happened to me. I lived in my apartment for five years and everything was fine, but these things will no doubt happen. But all you can do is straight up apologize acknowledge them, acknowledge that there's an issue, let them know you're going to get a tradesman there as fast as possible. You call your tradesman, you let them know that the tradesman is coming, you check in while the tradesman's there or you go when the tradesman's there, apologizing that you have to interrupt their visit. You then go back and clean up any mess. You check in with them again to make sure everything's all right. You continually communicate with your guests and let them know that you care, that you are getting the problem fixed and just make sure that they're happy because if they're not happy, they're going to review you badly. Now, out of all the issues that I've had, none of these issues have caused me a bad review. They've even mentioned in reviews how wonderfully I coped with an issue that happened while they were there, not mentioning the issue, which was great, but just to say thank you for helping them and, and being so attentive and responsive and getting the problem fixed as quickly as I could. So it can work in your favor, actually, when something goes wrong. So don't overreact, just go to work and get it fixed because you might be on the winning end of this. You just think about yourself all the time, how you'd like it handled. No, you don't want things going wrong. Of course you don't, but it's how you react. It's how quickly you react. It's how nice you are about it. And if it's something that you can't fix and it's something really big, then you may have to consider giving them some kind of re fund or some kind of gift, maybe a bottle of wine, maybe you give them a night free, maybe you even suggest if they come back you give them a couple of nights free, something like that. You may have to give them some kind of compensation if it's really bad, but to be honest, I've never had to do that. So don't forget to just be as nice as you possibly can, to be as helpful as you can, to be as quick about it as you can. You're going to need a list of tradespeople. You know, you're going to need an electrician, you're going to need a plumber, you're going to need maybe a carpet cleaner, you might need an air conditioner repair man. Just think about what you might need and make sure you've got a list of them because you will need them. They're on holidays. You wanna make sure every guest leaves with a lovely memory of your property and that they tell others that they wanna come back. That just makes you feel good. Yes, the money's important. I love the money coming in. It gives me a real boost after all the hard work I put in, but I also love getting a great review from a guest and finding out that they really had a wonderful time. Secondly, be very clear and very honest when you're setting up the Airbnb app. As I said last week, I didn't have a dishwasher for a while, so I had to say I didn't have one because I wouldn't want someone coming to my apartment expecting there to be one and there's not. That would just upset them from the get-go. Also, I don't have a washing machine now, so I'm clear about that. I don't offer a washing machine or a dryer, but I do give them all the details on how they can go about having their washing done for them or they can go to a self-service place just close by and I've got all the details in there, the directions, how much it costs, as much information as I can possibly give them so that 
it overrides anything I don't have to offer. So please be honest, be clear. If you don't have a work table for them for their computer, don't say that you do. If you don't have a door that they can close, that they can work quietly, don't say that you do. Don't say you've got a balcony when you don't have one. Don't say you've got a queen size bed when it's only a double bed. Don't say you've got a bath when you've only got a shower. These things will upset people because they will have paid for a certain experience and then they're going to be upset that they didn't get it. They'll be upset from the very beginning and you'll never recover from this. You'll never get a good review from someone if you've outright lied. You don't know what it is about what you said about your apartment that has made them book. Like I've got a swimming pool in my in my building and somebody inquired once how long that pool was. Now I wasn't actually sure so I looked into it, it got them the details. Fortunately that was good enough for them. But if I'd lied about it, then they might, or if it had been a smaller pool than they were looking for, that could have just ruined their whole holiday. I understand that because I'm a swimmer. When I go on holidays, I like to swim. Now, if I inquired, was there a swimming pool? And they told me it was a, a pool that I could swim lengths in. And then I got there and it was only a wading pool. I'd be really upset. So make sure that you're very honest because they have built a picture in their mind of what they expect from reading your app and they're going to be happy if they arrive and it is as you've explained. This might not suit every Airbnb, but take what you like of this and disregard the rest. This is the advice I got when I set up my Airbnb was to set it up like a hotel. I'm competing with a lot of hotels in my area and my girlfriend who has two fantastic Airbnbs running very successfully for quite a while now, this was her advice. But she said, just get rid of everything and just keep it clean. So four plates, four bowls, four knives, four forks, four spoons, just four of everything because I have a, a space that only accommodates two guests. Four wine glasses, enough that they have enough for a holiday that they wash it and rewash it. What you don't want is when you come in to do the cleaning that you're washing everything again, that you've got a lot of stuff to check and to wash. I also offer them things like a hotel does, like a bottle of wine, some snacks. These are all free, unlike in a hotel. That's also very much appreciated by guests. Coffee, tea, sugar, a yoga mat, an umbrella, band-aids, face wipes. I think of as many things as I can that my guests might really appreciate if they're coming for a stay and they may have forgotten something like that. Scissors, a lighter, batteries, candles and replacement candles. I read a comment the other day that some Airbnb guest had written that they went to stay in an Airbnb and this really is turning people off Airbnbs where the host had not left them toilet paper. They had to go and buy their own toilet paper. This is absolutely a no-no. You have to supply everything that your guests would reasonably need for their stay, toilet paper, tissues, paper towels, anything that makes their stay comfortable, that they don't have to immediately go shopping. I leave them milk in the fridge. I leave them a torch just in case the lights go out. Think of everything you can think of. Think of a hotel stay and think what do they put in the hotel and then just do extra. Add whatever you can think of that is not overly expensive. I bought my yoga mat from Kmart. I don't buy super expensive wine, but no one's ever complained about it. It's actually very drinkable wine. I always leave them pretzels and popcorn and chocolates. These things are not super expensive, but everyone appreciates them. That little bit extra, it puts you ahead of the competition. It says to your guests, I really care about you being happy and I just want to give you something to say thank you for coming and staying in my apartment because I know it's going to help me get a good review. And as I said in the beginning, the reviews are everything. So just think about making your guest happy that they hopefully give you a good review. All right, cleaning is really, really important in an Airbnb, and this will definitely get you good reviews if you have a spotless Airbnb. I know so many of my guests have given me a good rating because of how clean my apartment is. It shines. My girlfriend also gave me this advice. She said, just shine everything. So Windex is actually one of my most popular cleaning products. I use it for everything. Of course, now we have to also make sure that we do a proper COVID clean. So you're going to do your proper antibacterial clean of everything. If you get a bad review for cleanliness of your apartment or your home, it's really hard to come back from. If you aren't doing the cleaning yourself, that you have got a good cleaner and that you can trust them. And from time to time, I be checking that. My partner and I are absolute neat freaks and that's why I struggle to allow someone else to clean my Airbnb because I just know I do a better job of it. I am very, very particular. I do shine everything. You know, the stove tops, the glass in the shower, I have glass walls as well as glass doors. 
look behind the toilet, check for finger marks, dust on top of the television, on top of the pictures, check under the couch pillows for hairs, shake out your pillows, make sure that they're clean, that nobody has put their feet on them or, you know, spilt anything. There's nothing worse than going into a space and feeling like someone else has just been there, that it, there's their hair there in the bath or in the shower or under the couch or on the couch or on the pillows or on the pillows on the bed. Really check for this double check because there's nothing worse a hair can really upset people so you want to have an absolutely clean space so clean everywhere shine everything get some windex the day that you don't do something the day that something is missed that's the person that's going to come in and notice and give you a bad review and that bad review will sit there and sit there and you will struggle to move past it so it's really important if you're having a, if you're going to go into the Airbnb business make sure that you don't mind cleaning because it is a big part of running an Airbnb you don't get new guests if you don't have good reviews and guests don't want to come to a space that doesn't feel clean to them I certainly wouldn't make sure that you check the cupboards check the glasses check the cutlery open every cupboard because you don't know what they've touched while they've been there put everything back neatly make sure it looks like nobody has touched it nobody has been there before them like I said before like a hotel imagine that someone's come in and set it up just fresh for you I would rather a guest was waiting for me to finish cleaning and it's never happened thankfully but I would rather that than to have them come in and be unhappy with the way that I presented everything because your presentation, your cleanliness is going to get you great reviews. Sadly, you can't please everybody and you won't get a review from everybody, no matter how hard you work, no matter how hospitable you are, no matter how honest you are on the app, no matter how clean you leave your apartment, no matter how beautifully you present it, some people will just not review you. And this is really upsetting. My very first guest back in 2019, they came into an absolutely pristine apartment. I had just set it up. Everything was brand new. It was just beautiful. I was so proud of it. And I could not get them to leave me a review. I don't know why. They seemed happy enough. I checked in with them. Everything seemed fine. But they were not very communicative. And I've learned as time goes on that those guests that you don't hear much from, they sometimes are not people that review or they're unhappy about something. So that's why you're probably good to keep checking in with those people. You have to use your intuition a bit. I've learned now there are some tricks to getting people to review. So first up, I always send people a welcome letter. I want to let them know that I want to do everything for them to make sure they get a five-star experience and I'm looking forward to a five-star review. So if there's anything that they have a problem with, I want to know as soon as possible. So that's why you check back in with your guests again when they've checked in, give it a few hours and then check in with them just to see if there's anything that they need and then you can leave them alone. Maybe if you don't hear from them, then you can check in you know, a few days later or maybe a week later, depending on how long they're staying. If it's only your short stay then you're not going to check in again until near the end. I always send my guests a little message just the day before they're leaving just to remind them to leave the keys on the glass table. Hope they've had a wonderful stay and I look forward to receiving their five-star review that I would really appreciate it and I put little praying hands and I always say a five-star review. You have to ask for what you want to receive so let people know that you're looking for a five-star review, not a three and a half or a four, five stars. You have to ask for reviews. People will not just naturally leave them. My daughter is a big Airbnb stayer, much more than I am. She stayed in many Airbnbs all over the world. And it wasn't until I had my Airbnb and I was talking to her about reviews and she goes, oh, I never review. And I'm like, what do you mean you never review? The poor host just put all this work in and you never review them. And she was so upset. She didn't realize how important it was to the host to hear how much she'd enjoyed the stay or if there was a problem to at least let the host know while she was staying. She's just one of these people, like a lot of young people are, that just think it's easier to not say anything. So unless you ask, you're not going to receive. It doesn't mean you have to get a review from everybody, but in the beginning, if you're a new host, you really want to work on getting those reviews coming in. So I send people a little message. If I haven't heard from them, they haven't reviewed, and I think they've had a great time, they've told me they've had a great time, sometimes people just forget. So you can send them this little message saying something along the lines of, Lizzie here, thank you so much for choosing my apartment when you were in Sydney. I hope you had a wonderful stay. I've left you a glowing review. I look forward to receiving your five-star review, and hope Hope to have you back sometime. Cheers Lizzie. You can also say I'd really appreciate if you could just go to the review section on Airbnb and fill that out at your earliest convenience and I look forward to seeing you again.
If you're a new Airbnb host and you're not getting reviews, ask for them and be clear that you want a five star review and go out of your way to make sure you do the other four things I mentioned because they will garner you reviews. It's very hard in the beginning when you're not getting guests and you're not getting reviews. So every review that you get in the beginning is gold to you. You need to make sure you get those reviews. There are some more tips and tricks I can give you to getting good reviews and to running a great Airbnb. So please subscribe to the channel and I'll see you real soon.